Hi everyone, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. Thank you so much for being here today. Hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are. It really means a lot for you to be here with 60 and Me and uh, on this journey of our 60s, 70s, 80s and beyond. Now, one of the things that we talk about a lot on 60 and Me is the reinvention element of getting older, that we have an opportunity when we uh, get older to, to really think about seriously what is our passion and our purpose in life and to overcome any barriers that are preventing us from truly becoming ourselves. That is the gift that we get when we have when we're a little older. Leslie Moon, one of our bloggers, wrote this article called Overcoming Internal and External Barriers That Prevent Us From Growth. And I want to talk a little bit about that because I think that uh, as we get older, we say to ourselves at one level, I can do anything I want. I can be anything I want, be, any, be anywhere. I can make this change or, or you know, this reinvention or start this business or whatever that um, catalyst is for change. But then we suddenly realize that there is potentially two different ways that we're being hit with, with barriers. The first is from other people who question our intentions or just don't support us in our, our mission because some of these ideas might be pretty crazy. They might be very um, you know different than what they're used to seeing you in, like the, the projection of the person that you've done in the world so far may be different. So, or the other thing, of course, is, is that you put your own barriers. You create your own challenges and obstacles so that you don't achieve those goals. Now, we, I think, if we're going to move forward and make the most of this incredible time in our lives, be able to overcome those barriers and find ways to both talk to the people that are, um, the barriers that are being created by people around us and also how to talk to ourselves. And in some ways, the former might be easier than the, than the latter, but we're gonna talk about both of them today. So people um, around us and the circumstances in our own lives. Now, the, the the obstacles that people give us are are very different in in texture and quality and influence than the, the ones we give ourselves. They actually, in some ways, can be very easy to push out of the way. But then we are so used to being perceived or seen as that certain that type of person in our lives, it's hard to give it up. And it's hard to, in many ways, let go of the people who hold us to that definition, to that stereotype. Now, it could mean uh, uh, at a very extreme level that we want to leave the partner or the person that we've been with for many, many years. It could be 20, 30, 40 years. And the, um, the, the occurrence of now of, of what they call silver divorces is actually very, very common that women, particularly women, want to be moving forward with their lives. They want to travel. They want to make new friends. And a, a partner just is not in that place with them. So we, you know, we have to overcome that that one to start with, I think, as women. But then we get the people who have been our friends for years. And then they say things like, you know, are you crazy? You want to do what? Um, you know, it's like they, they just give you that look like, honestly, are you serious? And, you know, moving away from your house, like you've got a beautiful house, you've lived here for like 30 years, it's gorgeous. Why would you wanna move into an apartment downtown? I mean, what are you thinking? <laughs> Remember that, I mean, this is what happens. Or you know, if you're starting a business, you're, you can start a business, you know, selling bicycle parts, you don't ride a bike. How are you going to do that? <laughs> Whatever, you know, I'm just making it up. But it's like they'll always come up with a, with a, a reason to, to challenge you. Um, you're going to start a business, no, it's not, we're, you don't have the expertise. You're not that, you're not kind of that kind of person. You know, it's just, they come back with you and they come back not with things they know about you necessarily, but things that they fear about themselves. There was um, a quote that Elizabeth Kubler-Ross told me when I worked with her for some years, um, that which has stayed with me. I, I, I follow it religiously, which is, you always criticize in other people the things that you fear most in yourself. So a lot of times your friends, your, your partner, your husband, your wife, people who um, are the closest to you are the ones that might be pushing back on you, not because of you, but because of themselves. They're, they're criticizing you because of something that they fear. And that's been played out in so many platforms in my life and so many situations. My sons, I think, are tired of me saying it, but it's so, so true that we often criticize others for the things we fear and a lot of the uh, racism and, and uh, ageism and all the isms that we know hurt our society and our world are grounded in that reality that we try, you know, we criticize the things in others. Anyway, so you've got the perfect benefits, you've got the perfect home, you've got the perfect partner. Why are you thinking of leaving? Anyway, you get the idea. People will push back on your dream and then that triggers something that's really important in you, which is this imposter syndrome. Like, 
oh my goodness, you're right. I don't have that skill or, you know, yeah, you're right. I mean, I'm not really good enough to do that or I haven't got the skills to do that. No, you're right. I don't even speak Italian. How can I possibly move to Italy? You know, and that's the thing that happens is you then create this imposter syndrome, which supports the criticism of others. So what's, what's the answer? Surround yourself with people who love you unconditionally, people who would just say, wow, that's a great idea. Um, let me help you think that through. I mean, if, even if they've got some genuine concerns, let, let's work on that together. Let's work it through. And they, um, you know, they, they're there to help you and to give you encouragement and not to say, don't do it, but to say, yeah, go for it. Sounds great. So choose people who support you, but people who make you accountable people who are truthful to you, people who will tell you, you know, what they think, not hide behind, you know, what they think you're going to, how you're going to respond, but choose, choose your people wisely. Maybe even more important as you get a little older than when you are younger, just choose wisely. Eliminate the toxic people. So there are some other realities though, that people will bring up to you, which are important. And I think the best thing when you have a, a good friend who says, you know, have you thought about how that's going to play out financially? Or are you really 100% sure you've got all the angles? I mean, maybe we should take a little trip down to Italy and you could, you know, you could check it out and make sure it's the place you want to be. I mean, they genuinely have got some ideas. The next thing that Leslie says is important is that you kind of do a brain dump of everything. You know, like you just take it all in, write it down, no matter how silly it all sounds, just before you make that leap into something that's, you know, supporting your vision for yourself and for your life, but just take into consideration other feedback. I mean, it's really good to do that um, and, and just start thinking, okay, so I haven't got enough money. And that's a good point that Susan made there. She made that really, that's a good, ch a good challenge for me. So what will I do? I will stop going to Starbucks every day or I will, you know, whatever. I will sell my car, second car, or I'll just do whatever. I'll sell my car, whatever, um, you know, you then can build a solution to deal with the, with the challenge, which was very valid and useful and that's okay. But then of course, the second category of barriers are here, our fears. These are the inner voice that tells us we're too old, we're too, you know, inexperienced, we're too, you know, um, I don't know, we're too lacking physical um, strength, we're too unhealthy, we're too used to living alone, we're, we're too anything. And that's the thing, that fear of making a big change, which we know we can do, we know how to do that, but it's sort of the inner voice saying you're too whatever. And then you just pull back and you think, no, you're right. You know, it's, but it's not anything but fear. And I know Pema Chodron, a Buddhist nun, said once something like, the closer, wait, you know you're feeling fear when you're getting close to the truth. And I think that's a really wonderful way of looking at this whole movement of towards our dream, towards the places that we want to be, the things we want to do, that when we start feeling fear, it could just be that we're moving closer to the truth of what we really, really, really want. And so don't let those inner, that self-talk, that negative self-talk, that I'm not good at, you're not good enough, you're not strong enough, you're not rich enough, you're not enough, um, to stop you from trying to do what you want to do. Moving, moving home is a big thing for a lot of people. If you live in a big house and you want to move to a smaller place or you just want to move somewhere else, you know, in, in your life, it's, it's, it's a big decision and you know, there will be lots of obstacles from outside, people commenting and, and critiquing, and also from inside. It's not the right thing to do. I'm not ready. I'm not, I haven't got the money. I haven't got a place to go. I don't know what I want. Those are the fears that will take it away. So is there anything that you would like to do that to define your life in your 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s that you're not doing right now? And what obstacles and barriers do you see in the way? And I guess the third question is, what are you going to do about it? I do hope this has been a good conversation and giving you something to think about, some, some ideas for your future, for what you really want with your life as you continue this journey. But whatever it is, be strong, stay well, and I'm with you always and on your, by your side and we're in this together. And I look forward to reading your feedback and hearing your comments in my mind. I love you so much, guys. Take very, very, very good care. Bye-bye for now.